Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab, and today will be another video about Home Assistant. In this video, we're gonna focus specifically for ZigBee connection and what you can do with it. And before you ask what ZigBee, I in my hand have a USB dongle connect for ZigBee. And in this video, we're gonna show how you can add this USB in your Home Assistant. But only not to add this USB in your Home Assistant, but how you can control, how you can measure using those ZigBee device. In my right hand, have a temperature sensor where they check the temperature and humidity. And this way you can buy one of those really small with a three volts battery and connect for this USB Zango and that uh, you can monitor the temperature in specific place. Imagine that you want to temperature in your cupboard or in a room or any place to do some optimization. And with one of those will be possible. And other thing, in this video specific, I will show how you can do the normal integration. So we're gonna go integration add it for this specific brand. And another video, I will show how you can do a general integration using MMT and a Zigbee to MMT. If we use the second option, not necessarily that you need to have this USB dongle connect to your home system or your Raspberry Pi. You can have another system work with Docker, and this Docker will connect to this. USB dongle and that transmit all the data. So, if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video, but first of all, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe for the channel and... So before I start to explain anything else for this video, first information, I'm using this uh, Zigbee Jungle. Not necessarily that uh, I choose this brand only because any reason, it's because I have a lot of review in the internet and that's uh, the good reviews about it and was the cheapest one that I could find. So the first thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna get this USB jungle and that's we're gonna have our Raspberry Pi using the home system and we're gonna connect it. If you're not using Raspberry Pi, you're using a server, you need to locate that specific port to your Docker container. Otherwise, it will not work as expected. Anyway, we're gonna connect in our home system, in our Raspberry Pi principally, and that, remember, if you're using the Raspberry Pi 4.0, they have four connections, but the two, it's USB 3.0, and two of those USB 2.0. Because those do not transmit so many data, it's really easy for you to connect in USB 2.0, and you keep the two USB 3.0 free for anything that you want. So in this way, I will go connect this USB in our Raspberry Pi and that we continue our installation. Okay, once that we've connect our USB dongle to our home system, now we can come here in our home system. What we're gonna do in our home system, first we need to be sure that everything is connected as expected. How you can be sure about it? We're gonna go in settings and see if that physically USB is connected to our home system. The same thing will happen if you're using the Docker. You need to be sure that uh, that port from USB is connected for that container. Otherwise, it will not work as expected. So first thing, we come here in our home system. Here we come in settings and in our settings, we go all the way down to system. And in here in system, we go to our hardware. What it means, here they will show everything that's physically connected to your home system. First thing, they will show how much processor that they're using and how much run memory that they're using. But if you click in these three dots, you come all hardware, you're gonna see what's connected. If you tape USB here, if you look here, they appear SD1, 2, 3. This one means that my SSD that's connected to my home system have around eight partitions. And these eight partitions is complete SDA. Other thing, if you come here, here it's my Zigbee connection, 3.0 USB dongle, and if I open here, they appear all the information. So in this way, here's the path, and they are connected for USB item, this name. So I'm sure that it is properly connected. So in this way, I can close it, and I can come here again for settings, and I come here in integration. Integration, normally they will appear that I have a new device discovered. If this one don't appear, you come here in the integration, you search for Zigbee and they will appear Zigbee Home Automation. If you click here, they will appear the option that you want to do. Otherwise, you need to add a new Zigbee device. In my case, because I already opened here, I will return 
and close it and it will do the normal configuration. Only click configure. Here in configure, they will ask, do you want to configure this specific USB dongle? And I say, yes, I want to do it, so submit. And it will take some minutes until they blockade the USB, download all the key configuration and check if everything to right. So once that you know that everything go right, you can have some options. Because I already have configured USB before, I can restore automatic backup, I can keep radio networks, upload a manual backup, or I can erase everything. In my case, I will erase everything to be sure that I will start from clean and zero. So I click erase everything, and that they will load this specific ZigBee, will download all the configuration, and be sure that everything is working. You know that everything's working once that appear this page, that they appear this ZigBee coordinator. And I can go all the way down and here appear my ZigBee configuration. If I come here in device, they appear only one device. Now is the time that you can add some extra device. What's the best way for you to add the extra device? In my case, I will add this one and here it's a temperature sensor. So what you're gonna do, I will get my really specific tool and that I will put exactly this hole in the top where they will restart. What they suggest, they need to keep for three seconds and after three seconds, they will start to flash the light. And let's wait. So I will try to put here, if you guys can see, they are flashing this light. What it means, they are in sync operation. Once that they start to be sync operation, you can come here and put add an extra device. If I click add via this device, they will start to sync and this one will take some minutes. They write fine, they write configure, and they write initiate. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes take a little bit longer, but in this case, they are ready to use. What can, do, can I do? I can change the name, and in this case, I will do a living room. Let's not keep any capital letter, want to guarantee. And if I look here, they have the battery, they have unity, they have identity, and I have the temperature. So I will select this one to be in my living room and now I can return. Once that I return and return in settings, I can see that I already have a two device configured. If I click in this two device, I have my ZigBee coordinator and I have my living room temperature. Here in my living room temperature, I have that it's at the moment 52.4% mm -hmm. of humidity in my living room and here's my temperature. 25 degrees and this date has been collected 18 seconds ago so in this way i can add this one for my dashboard or i can see anything else what we're gonna do we're gonna try to add this information to my dashboard so i'll come here again my mushroom i'll come here add add and add a new card as i have as an identity so i come here identity and i will search it so we'll put living room and search it so Remember that I have this T3000, I could potentially modify it, but in my case, I will leave exactly the same and put here. In this way, they already appear my humidity. If you're using mushroom, it will be a little bit different board, you can make vertical or horizontal, but here I can save it. So if I click here, I know what's the temperature, and if I come here in settings, I know what's the range. So because it was in my pocket, once that it was configured, it was configured as zero initial because it didn't log any data and that they come here all the way up for 27 degrees and it start to go down. Here that I just configured is 25.1 degrees. I'm not sure if that ruins 25.1 degrees or because they didn't have enough temperature time to drop the temperature. So here is the living room temperature and I read at one specific device. In the next videos, I will show how you can add more device and it will be similar procedure. And with this net more device, you can configure it other things. So you can add a light switch and that you can configure your light according for your needs. So if I come here and come here and click a button, look like room three, I can turn off my light and can turn on my light according for my needs or I can physically go there in the switch and turn on and off my lights as well. The same thing for some RF sensors, so you can send some RF to turn on the TV or turn off the TV and continue on. So your imagination is the creation and the next videos I will start to show what you can do as well. So if you think that was interesting this video and you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.